In this tutorial, we will implement Q using circular array. As we know, Q is a linear data structure which follows FIFO that is first in first out method and the two ends of the Q are called front and rear where insertion always takes place at the rear and the elements are accessed or removed from the front. Now before moving forward, I recommend that you watch the tutorial Q using array because we will be using it as a base for this tutorial. Now suppose we take an array of size 5 to implement Q. As initially the array is empty, both front and rear will have the value minus 1. Now let's start inserting some values in our Q. Let's say we call the nQ function to insert the value 2. Now as we are inserting the first element in the Q, first of all we will make front equal to 0 and then we will increment rear by 1 and insert the value 2 at rear. Similarly, if we nQ3, we will increment rear by 1 and insert the value 3 at index 1. Next, we nQ the value 5. So again, we increment rear by 1 and insert the value 5 at index 2. Similarly, we nQ the value 7 at index 3 and the value 8 at index 4. Now we can see that the queue is full and we cannot nQ any more elements. So now let's remove some elements from the queue. For that, we will use the dQ function, which will increment front by 1. And as we consider the queue from front to rear, we will not consider 2 as part of the queue. And therefore, we have removed the element 2 from the queue. So again, performing the dQ operation, let's increment front by 1 and dQ the element 3. And now if we try to nQ another element, say 9, we cannot insert it into the queue. As previously, we took the condition that if rear is equal to size minus 1, that is the last index, then we consider the queue to be full. But if we observe carefully, in the array we have two empty locations, that is at index 0 and index 1. So using the concept of circular array, we can use those two empty locations to insert elements and increase the capacity of our queue. And for that, after the last index, that is index 4, we have to make rear reach the index 0 so that we can insert the element at that index and for that instead of incrementing rear by 1 we will make rear equal to rear plus 1 modulo size and what this will do is after the last index that is index 4 it will move the rear to index 0 and we can verify that as rear is now equal to 4 and when we nq 9 rear plus 1 would be 5 and 5 modulo 5 would be 0 Therefore, after the index 4, rear will move to index 0 and then we can simply insert the value 9 at index 0. So let's nq another element say 10 and now the value of rear is 0 and rear plus 1 is 1 and when we take the modulo of 1 with 5, we get 1 as the remainder. Therefore, rear will move on to the index 1 and we can simply insert the value 10 at that index. So overall, the only thing that we have changed is Instead of only incrementing rear by 1, we are now incrementing rear by 1 and then taking its modulo with the size of the array so that after the last index, rear would come back to the index 0. Now let's understand one more thing. If now we try to insert another element say 11 and we can't do that because now if we increment rear and insert the value 11, it will override the value 5. So we have to redefine the condition to check when the queue is full. So now if rear plus 1 modulus size is equal to front, we will see that the queue is full, which in simple terms means that whenever the element next to rear is the front of the queue, we will see that the queue is full. So now let's look at the functions that we made while implementing queue using array, as we will have to make few changes in them so that they work with circular array. First, let's define the size of our queue as 5. Then we create an array of 5 elements and we initialize our front and rear as minus 1. Now there would be no change in our isEmpty function which will simply return true if both front and rear are minus 1 which means that the queue is empty otherwise it will return false. Next we take our nQ function and let's make some changes in it so that it works with circular array. We will start our nQ function which takes as argument an integer value which is the value to be inserted in the queue Next, we were checking the condition for the queue to be full, which now would be if rear plus 1 modulus size is equal to front. We will say that the queue is full. 
if we are inserting the first element that is front will be equal to minus 1 then we will make front equal to 0 and next instead of just incrementing rear we will make rear equal to rear plus 1 modulo size and finally we will insert the value at rear next let's look at our dq function and in this function the condition to check whether the queue is empty or not will be the same and if the queue is not empty we will check if front is equal to rear that means there is only one element in the queue and if we remove that we will make both front and rear equal to minus one else to dequeue the element instead of just incrementing front we will make front equal to front plus one modulo size so that we can move front in a circular way just as we did with rear next the function to show the element at front in the queue will remain the same that is first we will check if the queue is empty or not and if the queue is not empty we will simply display the element at front now finally let's see how we will display the elements of the queue previously we were simply traversing the array from front to rear and displaying the element at every index so firstly we will check if the queue is empty or not but now we will have to consider two cases the first one being that front is less than or equal to rear which is the case of normal array and we will simply traverse the array from front to rear and display the element at each index while in the next case when front is greater than rear which might happen in the case of circular array when the queue is starting at a greater index and ending at a lower index because after the last index we inserted values at index 0 and index 1 so before getting to this case let's implement the first case so for the first case when front is less than or equal to rear we will simply start our for loop from front till rear and display the element at each index and in the second case what we will do is initially we will make i equal to front and then we will run a loop from front to the last index of the array that is while i is less than size we will print the element at i and we will increment i by 1 which in the current example would display the element 7 and 8 and in the next part we will display the remaining elements for that we will make i equal to 0 and then we will loop from the first index that is 0 till rear and display each element that is while i is less than and equal to rear we will display the element at i and we will increment i by 1 until we reach rear so this is how we display elements when we are using circular array to download the full code check out the link in the description thank you for watching